Birch is probably my favorite kind of tree. The bark is excellent fire starter. You can drink the sap. People even build canoes out of the bark. But this tree is going to become a hunting bow. Birch is generally considered to be a soft wood, but here in the North Country, it's the hardest one that we have access to. So there's an important step that the natives have been using for thousands of years in order to make a very fast hunting bow out of such a soft wood. I'll get to that later. First, let's cut this tree down. The first thing I want to do is I want to remove the bark. And I want to remove the bark in as big a pieces as possible because I, I plan on using it later. So I'm just going to take my knife and cut a line down the side of this log. This is not paper birch. This is Alaskan yellow birch. So it's unlikely that I'm going to be able to peel off the entire bark in one go but some nice big sheets for making things out of later would be nice. I can do all kinds of stuff with this. Now that this log is debarked, I can see the grain structure and where all the little knots are and pick the best side to be the back of my bow. However, this is the riskiest part of any bow build because any effort to save time, you risk ruining the whole log entirely. If I try and split this log and the grain structure twists, it'll be useless. There's a few big knots. These small ones here are no problem at all. But this side is almost completely not free. That was almost picture perfect. There's a slight propeller twist from that end to this end, but I'll be able to get that out no problem. If you watched my kayak building video, you know that I have had a terrible time splitting logs lately. So getting this one to split from end to end feels pretty good. This other half of the log will be very useful to me later. Birch is a great steam bending wood, so I could make snowshoes out of it, a dog sled, canoe ribs, who knows what I'll make out of this log, but it's important to protect it. So since I'm gonna set it aside for a while, I'm gonna take Elmer's glue, just regular classroom glue, and put it all over the ends of this log, and that'll prevent the ends from splitting as the wood dries. I'm gonna take a chalk line and draw a line down the back. I'm just taking two fingers and putting it on either side of the chalk line and making marks every six inches or so. And then I'll draw lines and this will just give me a little bit more than an inch on either side of the blue line. I don't actually have a measuring tape with me, so this bow will all be just made off of measurements of my own body. And I think that's cooler anyway. I like to work my birch bows into shape when the wood is still green. I cut this down two hours ago, and carving it is like carving butter. And because birch is really resilient and doesn't usually crack when it dries, 
I can get this bow down to the shape that I need it and then speed dry it. And that's part of the process that makes birch such a special bow wood. This is now just over two inches wide from end to end. And I just need to get the thickness the same. I'm just guesstimating about a half an inch. I put my fingernail against the bark here and then drag my pencil about half an inch and do the whole side of the bow. Everything from this line towards the cut side of the wood needs to be removed. I'll make sure that I leave extra for the handle though. This bow does not need to be taller than me. So there's kind of a happy medium between smooth draw cycle and also speed of arrow. For me, it would be probably about nose height. So I'll just mark it right there. And then I'll use this piece of string to find the middle. So if I just put that in that little notch, stretch it to the bottom, and then fold it in half, that'd be my middle. And if I just put my hand over that middle, then I can mark the sides of my hand and that's how long my handle needs to be. Sometimes I think about the limits of bending wood, and when you do this, you realize that if the wood was infinitely thin, you could bend it infinitely tight. So if I wanna make myself a nice recurve bow, I just need really wide, flat limbs. I drew a couple lines. I tapered it to the width of my pointer finger from about a foot. So a forearm length tapers down to here. The handle section narrows and gets wider. And then I'll carve it into bow shape. I'll thin this down one more time and then we'll start the speed drying process. Okay, now that this is bending a little bit, I can start the process that makes birch so magical. These are all the scraps from building the bow. This is just a two by six piece of lumber. I cut a radius into it to get a little back set on my bows, but any straight piece of lumber would work. The only reason I'm using a piece of lumber is so that the bow doesn't twist as it dries. Birch has quite an interesting relationship with fire. Where I live, it really only grows in old burn scars. The bark will catch a spark even if it's been soaked in water, 
and the best way to make it stronger is to actually heat it over a fire. So what's happening here, this first fire is just meant to dry the wood out. And because birch is so stretchy, it doesn't crack when you dry it this fast. The second fire will be to actually crystallize the wood. I'll lower it down a lot closer to the fire. And what that does is it takes what was a soft, spongy, porous material and it crystallizes it and makes it much better under compression. I left it unattended too long and it fell into the fire. My little brick fell down and it caught on fire. So good thing I had two halves of that log. I'm going to start over again. Here's bow number one. I'm actually gonna heat treat the other one with this guy. The way I'm checking my temperature is just putting my hand under there. And I should be able to hold it for about three to five seconds. But what's most important is that it's even. I don't want to drive all the moisture out of this spot and none of it out of here because then when I go to tiller this bow, I'm going to have soft spots. I'm not looking to burn the wood. That's what happened last time. I'm just trying to drive moisture out. I'll be adjusting this bow and checking the temperature probably every 10 minutes long into the night. And then hopefully tomorrow morning, We'll be back to where we left off when the first one caught on fire. And tomorrow, I can tiller the bow, crystallize those fibers with a second fire, build some arrows, and then maybe even get out hunting. I'll be able to tell how much drier this is when I try and take a rasp to it. There's a tiny bit of back set now. That'll go away as I tiller. Oh wow, it's way stronger now. I'm just gonna cut simple string grooves. Nothing special, just notches that'll hold the string. And they angle down towards the belly of the bow. I also have to take off all of this inner bark, or the cambium. I don't take it all off. I leave a little bit for kind of a cool camo pattern. But I'm just going to use my regular draw knife and be really careful not to break the gross ring that is on the inside of the bark. Tillering is just the process of teaching the wood how to bend. I bend it, I mark with my pencil, I take off wood. I bend it, I mark with my pencil, I take off wood. This process used to take me days, but the more you do it, the better you get. All right, it's pretty tillered. I'm gonna fire harden it one more time, and this time I'm really gonna get it crispy, and that's where the speed is gonna come from. 
is the crystallization of the belly fibers. But before I do that, I'm just gonna draw my handle design and start carving it with this rasp. I just like to make a groove for my thumb and then also two little divots for my pointer finger and my index finger on the other side. While that bow is simmering over the fire, I'm just gonna make some arrows. We are hunting wabbits. Snowshoe hare to be specific. And I've already seen one and I haven't even strung my bow yet. There we go. And I brought a bunch of different kinds of arrows. Some of the ones that I just made and a few old ones as well. It's a long shot, but I see one. He's turning brown. See how close he will let me get. Not very close at all. enough to shoot at it. There he goes. Man, are they jumpy today. I think it's because it was so warm that they turned brown. But it snowed again last night, so there's a fresh coat of white, and they know they stand out like a sore thumb. So they're not letting me get anywhere close to them. That is a snowshoe hare at about 80 yards. Let's see how close he will let us get. Probably 45, 50 yards is where he split. I just couldn't get a line through the trees. Rabbits aren't holding still for me today, so I'm not going to waste my whole day searching after rabbits that aren't going to let me get close enough to shoot. I will, however, make a couple of snowballs and show you how accurate I am with this bow. And if you want to see a video of me hunting with a bow very similar to this one, click here. And if you want to see what project I'm working on next, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week.